In this video, we're going to talk about setting a good North Star metric. My name is Kevin Wei, I'm a product manager, and I'm here to help you learn more about product. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for new tech interview prep videos every single week. A product's North Star captures how users obtain value from using a product. The North Star metric helps teams prioritize work and align on decisions. This single rate, count, or percentage is a leading indicator in how successful the product is doing. Let's first talk about three traits of a good North Star metric. As a side note, a lot of today's content references Amplitude's North Star checklist. Link in the description if you want to read more about it. Trait number one, it expresses value. A good North Star metric helps teams understand how customers truly derive value from the product. This means that simple counts like user counts, daily active users, or registered users aren't a good North Star metric since they don't tell you how users are getting value from the product. A better North Star metric might be the actions or behaviors that users take. Trait number two, it's measurable. A good North Star metric can be quantitatively tracked. For example, a team building a platform that produces thought-provoking films might love the idea of a North Star of increasing the number of people who silently reflect on the films as they watch them. But this is pretty hard to measure. So a better North Star metric might be the number of conversations being shared by customers on a message board about the films, something that can be implemented and tracked. Trait number three, it's actionable. A good North Star metric is one that can be directly influenced by the team. It shouldn't be tied to broader market trends or reflect metrics that would move whether the product exists or not. For example, a team building an HR app who wants to improve the employee experience shouldn't have a North Star metric on the number of years an employee stays at the company, since it's hard for the product to directly influence how long an employee chooses to stay at a company. By the same token, the North Star metric shouldn't be a vanity metric. Vanity metrics are numbers that might tell you about your product's short-term performance, but don't actually tell you much about its long-term success. An example of this is the number of downloads in the App Store or the number of users who've signed up for the product. These metrics don't directly tell you how the user is using the product or whether they're getting value from the product. Product development can't directly lift these metrics, so they're not good North Star metrics. Now that we know that a good North Star metric should express value, be measurable, and be actionable, let's talk about how you name and define it. The name of your North Star metric should be descriptive and punchy, something that energizes and inspires your team. The definition should be precise and clear and explicitly explains how you quantitatively measure it. So let's first talk about the description of your metric, and then we can work backwards to see how we can come up with a good name. The description of your North Star metric should cover both the product's current market functionality, performance, and its potential in the future. There should be a healthy tension between what the product is today in its current state and what it wants to be. You might want to start by defining some mutually exclusive inputs that drive how users ultimately get value from using the product. For an analytics app like Amplitude, for example, this might include the number of users who create or view some analytics chart. Then, these inputs would roll up to the North Star metric. It might also be helpful to define the threshold which users need to breach in order to get value from the product. This threshold might be identifiable from looking at historical data or customer behavior. Putting these learnings all together, it makes sense that Amplitude chose their North Star metric to be the number of active users who have shared a chart that was consumed by at least two other people in the last seven days. This represents Amplitude's most valuable persona, the user in the organization who shares content and insights to drive decisions and actions in the organization. With this, Amplitude came up with the punchy name of Weekly Learning Users, or WLUs as your name for their North Star metric. It's nice to have a punchy name like this to inspire the team. Then, if the team wants to drive this WLU count up, they can work to drive the inputs, like the number of charts being viewed or created. So we went over a lot in this video. We went over three traits of a good North Star metric, how you can quantify, and how you can name your North Star metric. As you can see, a good North Star metric helps the team understand how the user gets value from the product. It should be memorable, and it should inspire a team in their day-to-day -day work. I hope this helped paint a picture on how to set a North Star metric. 
And for more PM interview prep content, Exponent has the best resources to help you ace your interview, including in-depth interview courses, private coaching, and a community of experts ready to help you prep for even the toughest questions. Hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week and go to tryexponent.com to become a member today. Thanks for watching.